the Mummers, in the little theater of the air. Now, the Hermit. Harden Wilkin Company. One moment, please. Good afternoon, Harden Wilkin Company. Mr. Wilkin is talking on another line. Will you wait, please? Good afternoon, Harden Wilkin Company. No. No, I don't want any of it. Our advertising must pay for itself. I haven't any money to throw away on questionable charity. Goodwill be hanged. That doesn't put black ink in my ledger. No, tell them to peddle their magazine space somewhere else. I haven't any use for it. I didn't make my money to give it away. I have enough brains to make it. Let's hope I'll continue to have enough brains to keep it. Hello? Yes, Wills. Republic, 70,000 units, yes. American, 140,000 units. Standard, 95,000. That's grand, Wills. Huh? Well, never mind about that. You just bring in the orders. I'll take care of filling them on time. Yeah? Yep. Right. 305,000 units in one day. <laughs> I knew this invention would bring me a fortune. Over three million units the first year. Harden Wilgen, a millionaire in three years. A millionaire. That's all that counts. <laughs> a millionaire. All right, there's a more. Pull up. Right. <laughs> Hello, Alex. Hello. What you got? Another John Doe for you. John Doe, huh? Yeah. All right, bring him in. All right. <laughs> you got that in, Bill? Yep. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, where's he from? Out by Coleman Swamp. Drowned? Nope. How then? I don't know. Coroner had a look at him? Yeah. Performed an autopsy and still on a high dive. Here, put him on here and we'll wheel him in. A little higher. Uh, uh, how come he's a John Doe? Not a mark of identification on him. Labels torn off his clothes, even the buttons ripped off. Murder, eh? Looks like it. The question is, how? Poison? Coroner says not. Analysis showed no trace of poison. Say, Alec, uh... Do we have to go back any farther with you? Why? I don't like this place. Hey, you've been to the morgue enough times, Ford, not to bother you. It always does. I want to get out into the fresh air. Good thing my nose don't bother me. Well, okay, you can leave him here. I'll take care of him. Coroner will be in tomorrow, Alec. All right. I'll just check him in and wait for the coroner. That's right. Come on, let's get out of here. John Doe. Always bothers me when they bring them in. When they're not identified, they end up in Potter's Field. Seems to me a feller's soul just don't rest right when he's buried in Potter's Field as John Doe. I suppose when the names are read off, he'll know which one to answer to, and it'll be all right. But until then, I just can't see how his soul could rest peaceful. Now, let's see now. Uh, you'll take number nine, please. There. There, John Doe, number nine. John Doe, number nine. What? John Doe, number nine. Who, who, who's talking? <laughs> I must be hearing things. This place always did have strange echoes. Maybe the souls that got separated from their bodies too quick. I hope someone claims you, John Doe number nine.
I, Stanley Creighton, now John Doe number nine, destined for Potter's Field to rest among the nameless. Harden Wilgen saw to it that identification was impossible. Harden Wilgen. I thought he was my friend. <laughs> my friend. I know now that he never intended to share the proceeds of the invention with me. He was just waiting until I had it perfected. How was I to know when he handed me the drink that afternoon a month ago that it was the first step toward Potter's Field? It was in the little shack in Coldman Swamp where he'd gone for privacy. Wilgen said... Nearly finished, Stanley? Yes, Wilgen. And it's going to work this time. It's going to work. Good. What have you been doing in the kitchen? Just mixing up a little celebration drink. You chemists are always mixing up some new concoction. Well, here, stop a moment and try it. All right. It smelled good while you were making it. It is good. Hmm. It is at that. What is it? Made mostly of herbs that grow around the cabin here. Swell. Now... Hold your breath. I'm all ready to try the unit. You uh, hook those two connections to the battery while I get the thermometer attached. Uh, X goes to the positive terminal. Uh, where's that ammeter? I guess here it is. Ready? Ready. Connections tight? As tight as the clamps will hold. We're ready, then. I'll switch it on. Motor's running perfectly. Yes. Watch the thermometer. It's taking a nosedive already. Down 15 degrees. And look at the ammeter. The motor's drawing less than three amps of current. The experiment is successful, then? Of course it's successful. The unit will completely cool an automobile in less than half an hour. And will keep it cool as long as needed. The motor draws less than three amps. That's less than a car radio. The unit can be run off the car battery indefinitely? Of course it can. All the battery needs is normal charging. Harden, the Wilgen Creighton unit is ready for the market. Mm. <laughs> the Wilgen unit... Uh, let's drink on it. Our fortunes are made. Wilgen, we're rich. Of course we'll drink on it. <laughs> Bring on your witch's brew. <laughs> That's a good name for it, Stanley. In case the motor is we've planned and you won't hear a sound from it. Here we are, Stanley. To riches and easy living. To the successful marketing of the Wilgen Creighton unit. And then, on to more inventions. Hmm. <sighs> hey, you'll have to tell me how you make that drink. Has a bitter taste that I like. Yes, I'll tell you. Stanley, are you sure the unit is perfect? Wilgen, I'd stake my life on its perfect performance. Hmm. That's a high stake. That's how sure I am that it will do the work. The next thing is to get the necessary patents. You have all the papers, haven't you? Yes. Why don't we draw them up now? Why not wait till the morning? We'll do that first thing. All right. I, I feel a little sleepy. Do you? I... I think I'll turn in in a few minutes. Might be a good idea. I'm not very sleepy. I think I'll sit up a while. That drink seems to have gone to my head. In what way? How do you feel? Very dizzy. Uh -huh. My head feels very heavy. Not as heavy as it will feel in a few more minutes. What do you mean? Is it supposed to work that way? Yes. It is supposed to work that way. Why do you say it that way? Stare at me the way you do. <laughs> the witch's brew. That was a good name you gave the drink. Don't you feel dizzy, too? No. I didn't drink it. Didn't drink it? No. <laughs> the witch's brew. Why are you staring at me that way? Wilkin, you haven't... Yes, I have. I've poisoned you. You devil. <laughs> Try to get at me. Try to use your limbs. I, I can't. Your head's getting heavier. Why did you do this? Whose money is going to market this invention? Mine. You wouldn't have anything to market but for me. And whose solution are you using in the freezer? I told you what mixture to use. The Wilgen unit is going to make a fortune. The Wilgen unit. Not the Wilgen Creighton unit. <sighs> Wilgen, don't do this. Give me an antidote. There's no antidote known. I wouldn't if I could. I'll go away. I won't lay any claim to the invention. For heaven's sake... Don't kill me just to get it all for yourself. You'll go away. I've made sure of that. Wilgen, I can hardly see you. Give me an antidote. Save my life. You can't be so inhuman. The poison is made from two common herbs that grow here in the swamp. It's been known for centuries. In 24 hours, there will be no trace of it left in your body. With all identification marks removed from your clothes and no relatives to come sticking in their noses... 
That was convenient, Stanley. You not having any relatives. <laughs> Go ahead, writhe. In a few moments, when the poison is ready to overpower the heart, you will jump like a jack-in-a-box. They will find your body in a swamp, Stanley, near a spot I know of where the ground is hard. Won't leave footprints. <laughs> kick. Go on, kick. This was the only sure way. This unit is going to make me a fortune, and I'm not going to share it. It's over. He's dead. No one will ever know who he is or how he died. <laughs> ah, life is going to be easy now. Riches, luxury, and I'm safe. They'll never trace this to me. They won't know who he is. Got to get him out of here. Drag him outside, then see if I can lift him. Got to get out of here. 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 John Doe, number nine. Got to to get out of here. I don't like this making the rounds in the morgue at night. Never did. Somehow I like it less tonight. Too many echoes in this room tonight. <coughs> what was that? Got to get out of here. Too many echoes of lost souls in the morgue. <coughs> it's number nine. I swear... I I saw his hand move. It is moving. It is. It, it raised his head up and, and looked at me. Number nine is getting up out of his coffin. Not to get out of here. Talking. I, I hear him playing. Help! Help! It's not moving. He's talking. Help! Help! John Doe... Number nine, got to get out of here. Got to get out of here. John Doe, number nine, got to get out of here. John Doe. <laughs> A dead man gets up off the slab in the morgue and is now wandering through the city streets. Where is he going? What is he going to do? <laughs> the hermit will tell you before the night is done. <laughs> Gloom, John Doe approaches a certain building. Listen. <laughs> Going up. Up, please. Take me up, please. John Doe, number nine. Floor, please. Harden Wilgen Company. The Harden Wilgen Company. Eighteenth floor. Harden Wilgen Company is the third door to your right, sir. I know. Third door to right. Hmm. What's the matter with that guy? Good morning, Harden Wilgen Company. Just a moment, I'll have to look it up. I'll call you back in a few moments, Mr. Anders. Yes, sir. What did you wish? Harden Wilgen. This is the Harden Wilgen Company. 
I want to see Harden Wilgen. Whom shall I say is calling? John Doe. What's that? I am called John Doe. Mr. Wilgen knows me. He knows me. What did you wish to see Mr. Wilgen about? The Wilgen unit. Just a moment, then. I'll call Mr. Wilgen and find out if he can see you. Mr. Wilgen and Mr. Doe... Wait a minute, sir. You can't go into his office yet. Oh, look. Look, there's that man. He, he walked right through the door. He didn't open the door. He walked right through it. Help! Someone come here and help! Oh, help. Everything's getting black. Help. Grace. Hello, hello. What's wrong with that girl? Who wants me, did you say? John Doe, number nine. Oh. What? I want you, Wilgen. I, John Doe, number nine. You remember John Doe, number nine, don't you, Wilgen? Stanley. Stanley Creighton. I am John Doe, number nine. For a moment, I... I thought you were Stanley Creighton. You look like Stanley Creighton. John Doe, now. Number nine. How did you get in here? What do you want? You. Harden Wilgen. I want you. Get out of here. Get out of my office. Who are you? You know me, Wilgen. You remember the witch's brew? Stanley. You remember now. Stanley Crichton is dead. You're an imposter. No Get out. longer am I Stanley Crichton. You saw to that. I'm John Doe number nine. My residence is the morgue. My resting place, a cold slab of marble. Get out of my sight. Look at my hands in the daylight, Wilgen. They're turning black. The blood is drained from my body. Go stop. Look. Look, Wilgen. See? Here is the long slash on my body. The autopsy revealed no poison. You were right. Your crime was clever. You reckoned with everything but me. Get away. It'll do you no good to call for help, Wilgen. You've come face to face with me. Your face is white hot now, too. Like mine. Your heart is burning with fear. Your time on earth is almost drained away. Help! Your mouth is dry and parched, Wilgen. You feel dizzy. No. Try to use your limbs. You can't. I... A glass of water sitting in front of you. You need water. Yes. Drink it, Wilgen. Drink. <laughs> wasn't water, Wilgen. Poison. What? You hear me? Poison. You have drunk poison. Oh, help! Help! I'm, I'm, I'm choking. I can't, can't breathe. I, I, uh, 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 You'll speak no more. It's all over, Wilgen. You reckoned with everything but John Doe and death. I, John Doe, number nine. My work is done. John Doe, number nine. John Doe, number nine. John. I found her just like this, Doc, lying on the floor. She just fainted, that's all. She'll be all right in a moment. I thought I heard someone call help. It sounded like it came from the Wiggins Company, and so I ran in and found her lying on the floor. Then I ran down to your office, Doc. Oh. Uh, she's going to be all right. Take a drink of this, please. Oh, she was calling help. help. That's what she's saying now. Mr. Wilgen. Mr. Wilgen. What about Mr. Wilgen? A man... A man who said his name was John Doe walked right through the door. Walked through it. I saw him. He what? Don't you understand? He, he wasn't real. He vanished through the door into the office. Is this Mr. Wilgen's private office? Yes. He vanished through his door. I guess I'd better find out from Mr. Wilgen what this is all about. Mr. Wilgen. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Wilgen, but... Wait. What's wrong here? Uh, come in here, quickly. What's wrong, Doc? <gasps> Mr. Wilgen is... The man is dead. 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 
The man. The strange-looking man. He, he walked through the door, came in here and killed Mr. Wilgen. There are no wounds. Must have been his heart. I have never seen such a look on anyone's face before. He died in horror. Terrible horror. I told you I can't stand this place, Alec. And it's worse at night. You think I like it after all that's happened? Well, what are you bringing me back for? I, I just got to see. I got to see. You talk like a wild man. I think I'm losing my mind. Here. We're going to look at him. Who is it? You remember. John Doe, number nine? Yeah, I remember. He's lying here quiet now. Like all the dead lie. Sometimes... You think you can see him breathing? Oh, cut it, Alec. I heard him. I heard him speak. I saw him move last night. I saw it. You know, you know, you're plain nuts. Is that so? Well, listen, you saw the evening paper, didn't you? Sure, I saw it. You read about Harden Wilgen, didn't you? Yeah, I read it. Died in his office today. Sure he did. The coroner says it was just a case of heart attack. No signs of murder. Yeah. Oh, what are you talking about? They didn't bring the body of Harden Wilgen to the morgue. No. But you read about the girl in his office, didn't you? How she says a strange-looking fellow came in the Wilkin Company, said his name was John Doe, and how he walked right through the door. They say she was seeing things. Well, what, what about it? Hey, listen. You know what I think? It was this John Doe. Him. Lying here, he walked into that office. Alec, Alec, you are crazy. Crazy, am I? Dead bodies lying in morgues. Well, they don't get up and walk out in the streets. You don't think they do. No one thinks so. But me, I think so. Now I do. I tell you, I saw this John Doe number nine move on the slab last night. I heard him speak. I've always said a man buried as John Doe didn't rest easy in his grave. I want to get out of here. This one didn't rest easy. Even before we put him in the potter's field. It's like he really didn't die at all. And look at him now. Lying here. Quiet. Quiet and somehow peaceful. You know... He even looks different than he did last night. Sort of like he had gone to sleep in death. John Doe does rest peacefully now. Yes, his work is done. John Doe number nine even scores with Harden Wilgen. <laughs> Turn on your lights. Turn them on. <laughs> I'll be back. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> All characters, places, and occurrences mentioned in the Hermit's Cave are fictitious, and similarity to persons, places, or occurrences is purely accidental. 